Okay, well, welcome everyone to our July edition of On the Air with ODA. Uh, today with me is Carlos, so we're both from uh, uh, ODA Product Management. And uh, today we have a very interesting topic about how to use ODA as a low cost remote data protection uh, solution. So, so let's get started. Um, so this is the agenda. We're going to talk about some of the important considerations of setting up ODAs as a low-cost remote data protection, and uh, we actually then can go through the high-level process, and Carlos will go through a demo video to actually show you how to do it and, and the actual steps, and then we'll end up uh, in, uh, with a Q&A session for, with everyone, okay? So let's look at some of the important cons considerations, right? Um, the way we want to do this is uh, basically using a second ODA uh, remotely as a repository of uh, backups, right? So what you do is you configure the, the second ODA on the remote side uh, uh, very quickly, but what you do is you, you deploy the ODA without any Oracle database on homes. So therefore there's no license is required, right? And then uh, uh, what you do then you, you can very quickly set up a backup schedule on the primary ODA uh, using the integrated backup capability, right? And then finally, um, if or, uh, the primary ODA fails, but uh, because you were shipping all the backup to the remote ODA, and then we can very quickly using the remote ODA integrated recovery capability to, to restart the database on the remote side, right? And uh, now, obviously, the trade-off here is that, you know, you're saving the, the say, the data, data guard license cost, but um, uh, the, your recovery is only based on the most recent backup, right? So we, we did a quick um, estimate for the, um, the RPOs and RTOs, right? So the, 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 um, the RPOs is about 30 minutes, and the RTO, I think it depends on the configuration is about 30 to 40 minutes, right? Yeah, so, Paul, just, just to mention something on here, right? The, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the recovery point objective is, is 30 minutes because um, uh, the default configuration, and we, we are talking about the default configuration here on the backup, right? It's, uh, it does a full backup on Sunday and then a daily incremental backup on the rest of the, the days, Monday through Saturday. But then, it backs up the uh, archive logs every 30 minutes, so, right? So that's, that's your recovery point objective, uh, 30 minutes. And then the recovery time, as you said, right? Depends on the configuration. We tested a couple of times, uh, a single node basic configuration, and it was around 30 minutes, another 35 minutes. Um, so, it, and, but if you, if a customer has multiple databases, large databases, obviously that may take, that will take longer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Carlos. Yeah, that, that's it. But these are all good points. And then uh, I think another consideration is that this works uh, with uh, uh, ODA 19.11, which is a current release and later, right? And I also just want to point this out that uh, ODA is very uniquely positioned for doing this very efficiently, right? And I think Carlos, you're going to go through your demo and show show why you know. Uh, we're automating, you know, like 50 steps, right? Uh, with ODA. Right. Yeah, so it's a very, so, so it's very easy and, and very fast to set up this integrated backup uh, to, to the remote ODA. Then of course, it's also very easy and fast to restore the database backup from remote ODA. And then uh, of course, the whole reason for this is that, you know, Oracle recommends uh, Oracle Data Guard is the, 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 the proper, the, the right way to do disaster recovery. But we do uh, understand that for some customers, they may not have the budget and uh, they just can't afford it. And we're providing an alternative way to provide a, a low cost remote data protection uh, for our customers that, that, cho that choose to do that. And we can do it very well with uh, the unique capability of ODA that we're gonna go through in this presentation. And uh, uh, obviously, you know, uh, the reason we can do this is that we can leverage the ODA's uh, disaster recovery 10-day rules, right? There's a link to the document. So you can see that 
as long as you don't have the database and the binaries installed on this on the on the, the system, then there's no uh, uh, additional license required, and that's how we're we're doing this. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, and one point before we go to the next slide, Paul. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Okay. I mean that's that's why it's important on this third bullet, right? That once the primary order fails you're going to go to the target, bring up the database and start servicing clients from there, right? But but as Paul mentioned, this 10-day 10, 10 rule starts kicking in, and right? And you only have 10 separate 24-hour periods in a calendar year. So that's why it's important that once you restore the primary, you delete the Oracle database and database homes that you brought up on that target, right? To uh, to then uh, to then apply this 10 day rule in the next event. So here's the next slide, right? And and as as Paul mentioned, right? Why is Oracle Database Appliance is uniquely positioned for this use case, right? It's uh, I mean here what we're showing you is the iRestore, right? iRestore is a capability of integrated with the Oracle Database Appliance. Uh, that allows you in this case is to take the backup that we put in the target system and bring bring it up um, a, a database to start servicing clients. And you can see all the tasks that would have to be done manually, right? If uh, if a customer didn't have this capability. So that's, that's uh, what iRestore provides. Right, so Carlos, is this... Um... All the steps, or did you cut some off? Because I remember the list was longer than this when I looked at the last it, time. We made it smaller to fit in here. Oh, but okay, this, okay. Is, this is from uh, beginning to end. Yeah, so, so as you yeah. can see, right? If you don't have ODA, you basically have to manually do all these commands. And if something bad happens, then you have to figure out what the problem is, right? Whereas yeah. ODA, it's just one command, right? That, that does all right. these things for you. And then you can see the status as, as go through these. Uh, in the activity pa uh, page, yeah, and and you know you know what, Paul, um, we'll check on the on the demo video for mm -hmm. the last task here because I took this one from one of the developers, so hopefully he didn't cut it, but right, right. you're right. So, but we'll check on the video. Okay. Right. All right. So, what we're gonna show you is this high. Um, well, just uh, doing this backup from the source to the target. So this is the high level process here, right? It's a, I separated it into three sections, right? On the first one, um, we, we need to create the volume, the ACFS file system, and we need to configure NFS. And all of that needs to be done on the target system, right? The second step is now we mount that um, NFS mount point. Uh, then we create a backup configuration that is gonna be uh, type NFS. And then we attach that backup configuration to the database that you want to protect. Then we run the backup, right? It's a number three is going to be uh, once the backup is done, we copy the backup report to the target. And um, then we go back uh, to the target, right? If, well, number three is in case that you have a failure on the source, right? But you got to copy the backup report. And then uh, if there is a failure on the source, right, then you're going to create the database from your backup, right? One of the questions that we get on this is, well, I mean, if the backup report resides on the source and if it fails before I get the copy, right, it's, there's a couple of options. You can still build, um, uh, re, you can restore, right, from the information that is on the backup at the target, right? Or you, uh, you can also uh, set up a script on the source so that just copies the backup report to another location in case that the source fails. And um, within the next um, two or three weeks, we're gonna be publishing a blog with more details on what we're showing you today, right? And in that blog, we can put in a copy of that script uh, for someone who wants to use it. Yeah, hey, right. Carlos, so just a quick question. So, um, what? The question would be, how long does it take to, to set up this, uh, this uh, configuration? Oh, it's fairly quick. I mean, we're going to go through it and, and I'll mention it, right? It's okay. On, okay. on each step. Okay. But, okay. Um, All right. So just, uh, yeah. 
yeah so let's i mean let's go through the demo we're going to do the first step on the target and what you're seeing is a i mean we recorded all the steps right to show you on a video so and and to expedite in certain sections um we cut right sections of the video but we'll mention um okay. the the time that it takes so let's go through that so the first thing right remember that we are on um uh, on the target system right at the top you see two tabs uh the left one is the source system the right one is the target and so the first thing is that you've got to uh, be as a great user to run the asm configurator assistant right to create the volumes so we're creating the volume we're giving it a name, uh, BK or backup vol one, right? And it's in the data disk group. And we're making it in this case, hundred gigabyte size, right? So you run this, I mean, this takes just a, a few seconds, right? And the volume was created successfully, right? Now um, with this ASM command line, we're just gonna get the information on, on the volume, right? It's, um, another few seconds right and so here is the information on the volume something that i want to highlight is that when you create a volume right um, um, a volume device gets created and if you look at the name right that is it's the name of the volume but advm uh, appends right this this three digits and and this is uh, the volume device so this device functions at any disk or logical volume that we're going to use to mount the file system. So you're going to see that we're going to be using this uh, this name, right, on the next one. So we exit grid now. We go back to the appliance, and now that we have that volume, we're going to create a, an ACFS file system, right? The command is uh, make a file system MKFS. The type is going to be ACF. ACFS and we want it on that device, right? The uh, backup vol 1-410. And again, this is another step that is fairly quick. And you can see there, right? That is being formatted is complete and is our 100 gigabyte ACFS volume, right? So now once we have that, right? We use the server control, right? To add that file system. Uh, which is on this device, right? The backup vol one for ten, and we're gonna mount it on this location, right? BK uh, backup location. Uh, the file system type is ACFS. We are setting it to auto start, uh, so it, it automatically starts always, and we're setting that user um, to the Oracle user, right? It's uh, so. We do this, this takes just another few seconds. And then once that uh, we've added that um, um, file system, then we're gonna, we're gonna start the file system, right? And this is again, another few seconds. And now the file system is started, right? So here, uh, I mean, we mounted it to this backup location uh, so we just want to check, okay, let's make sure that it's mounted. Um, you don't, I didn't need to go to the backup location to just run DFV, right? To just show what are the mount points and confirm uh, that you can see on this last line, right? That is is mounted and is mounted on this uh, slash backup location that you see here. So that part is done, right? So now, um, the next step, like clear. So the next step is going to be to add it right to the export file. This is a primary configuration file for the NFS server. And this is uh, what we use to specify what directories are the ones that we want to share with the NFS clients, right? So I'm on the target system. I've already created the mount point slash backup location. And I want to share that with the source system. So um, so we go to the VI editor, right? And I add that line, right? So the backup location is the mount point. Um, that test system IP address that you see here is the 
uh, the source system. And these are the shared parameters, right? I wanted to read, write, and I wanted to sync um, when, when changes are made, right? So we add this uh, to the file, right? To the export system exit. So it's added. And then what we do, we just restart the NFS service. That way, it, it, uh, all the changes that we just made are um, immediately active, right? It's a, and that's done. I mean, it, it uh, pulled to your question, right? This is just only a, a few minutes, right? Create a volume, yeah. the file yeah. system, and then we configure NFS, right? Now we jump to the source system. We want to mount that, uh, that mount point that we just created. And then we create a backup configuration. So let's let's do that. Yeah. Right. So here we are on the um, on the source system, right? Uh, we make a directory. So this I name it the same, the backup location. And then here we're gonna mount that uh, what we created on the other system, right? So mount type NFS. You can see the host name uh, of the test system and the backup location, the mount point that we created. And we're gonna mount it on this backup location on, which is local to the source system, right? I mean, this is very quick. Um, so that's done. And now, right, we need to create the backup configuration. Just a, a quick refresher, right, for, for everyone here on, on how we do this in the Oracle Database Appliance, right? It's um, when we create a backup configuration or we also call it a backup policy, right? It, it, uh, this configuration of policy, um, it gets attached then to an Oracle database that you wanna protect. And this, uh, the backup configuration of backup policy will determine if it's gonna be the type of, okay, we're gonna go to an, an NFS server or we're gonna go to um, a local, uh, uh, but it's a fast recovery area within the same system, or we can specify that it's going to go to the object store, right? It's, um, so that's that's what we do with a backup configuration. W1, we uh, we set here the recovery window, right? It's, uh, it can be a few days here just for testing. We put in one day, right? It's, uh, but once you do that, um, you create the backup configuration, um, so I press enter here, then you get this job ID, right? That is creating it. We describe the job ID to know the status. And this, I mean, this, this was um, just to check it, right? You can see that started up, it was very quick. I mean, it's almost instantaneous. So um, that's the configuration. Right. Now, the next step is you can see here modify database. So what we're doing is the, uh, specifying DB1 is the name of the database that I want to back up. And with this parameter here, BIN, I'm attaching right, the network, the backup configuration that we just created, right? NFS backup config. So we do that. Again, you're going to get. Um, a task ID that is doing it, there it is. We describe it. Hey, Carlos, and I think we can uh, also do this in the GUI, right? To create a backup yes. policy. Yes, yes, yes. it sure. can be done in the GUI as well. It's just that, um, uh, well, we can, we can, do another video later on, right? But here yeah. we just wanted to show it's very, very straightforward and simple with the CLI as well, right? It's, um, and then here, um, I mean, you, you can just see the uh, all the tasks that that uh, modifying the database does, and you can see started at 1049 and 1050, right? It only took um, slightly a minute or something like that, right? So now we've, we've attached. Um, the backup configuration to the database, right? So it's done. And, and what we've done, that backup configuration picks up the default values, right? As I mentioned, the, the, um, the full backup is gonna be on Sunday and then incrementals after that. 
But here, what I'm doing with create a backup, this is manually forcing it to start, right, at this point. So I'm saying create the backup for this database that I want, DB1. And then the backup type is going to be the regular level zero, right? This is the full backup followed by incrementals. So if we do that, so same thing, right? We're going to get a job ID. Yeah, describe the ID. And here, right, it was, I mean, it's fairly small and quick. Uh, that is already done, right? It's uh, less than two minutes, basically, for this one. And so that's what it is. Now, now that the backup uh, is done, notice I'm jumping to the target system. So let's go. Let's go ahead and just check it, right? That's the backup location that we created. So let's just uh, run tree here to look at the files, and these are the file structure, the directories that um, the source, right, the backup, when it send the files over there. Uh, you notice here uh, the logs, this will continue to grow as time goes on, right? We're gonna be sending the archive logs every 30 minutes and we're gonna be sending an incremental every day, right, for this default backup configuration. Obviously the customer can change the default configuration if they wish to do so, right? But this, this uh, should cover um, a lot of the cases. So, so we've now we finished this step two, right? It's um, before we go to step three, we just wanted to test the backup, right? So, so, that, did, uh, oh, yeah. so, so that was pretty quick too, right? It didn't take that it, long, right? It is, right? But Paul, we have a very small database. So, customers, right, right. right? Customer may have a large database. So, that will. And, and depending on the connection, remember that we are here, we, we have that, two systems that are within the Oracle network, which is very fast. Uh, so it depends true. where that's customers true. are gonna be going, right? What connectivity yeah. they well, have. Yeah, I guess it also depends on the distance between the source and target uh, ODA, yeah. and then also the uh, uh, size of the database, right? At least yeah. the first backup is gonna take a, take a while to, to do, and then the incremental should be a lot faster, right? That's correct, Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then then uh, we run a test, right? We wanted to see, okay, what if we obtain the current system change number, right? Remember that when you restore a database in the Oracle Database Appliance, you can do it to multiple levels. You can do it to the last backup. You can do it to a certain system change number, to a point in time recovery, et cetera, right? You can do that. So for this testing, we're gonna obtain the current SEN number, and we're on the source system, right? So uh, we take the system change number, we're gonna create a test table in that DB1 database, um, describe the test table to make sure that it's, it's, it's there, right? And then we'll do a restore to that SEN number on step one. And obviously that SEN number didn't have that table. So when we restore it, we expect it to fail, right? So it's just, just a quick test. Um, so we, we log in to Oracle, right? Set up the our environment to DB1 and log in uh, to the appliance. I'm sorry, to the database. And then now here we obtain what is the current ASEAN number. You can see it right there, that number, right? The system change. So, and then next we just take uh, uh, that, just create a, a table test, right? Table created. We describe it just to confirm that it's there. So it is created, right? And then we just uh, are gonna exit. And now, right, you see here the Aura CLI recovered database, right? This is the um, Aura database command to restore, to recover a database, to restore it, right? And DB name is DB1. And we're doing the recovery type is the SEN, and here is the number that we want to recover to, right? So now it's going to the target system, right? Looking at uh, the data as of that SEN number, and it'll give us a job ID. We'll describe it, right? This is still running, you can see it. And then here it was success. 
So if you look at the time that it took, right, started at 11.15, ended at 11.21. So six, seven minutes um, that it took to do this step, right? It's, um, so now we go back in, log in to the database. Again, right, to just see if the table is there. And we describe the same uh, table and it's not there obviously because right it was prior to uh, to the point when we added the table so okay so now we're ready to go into step three right the um preparing in case preparing in case that the source fails so we're gonna copy the backup report to the target right so so we list the backup report and here you can see already right that the first line notice that it says regular l0 level zero this is the backup report for the full backup that we did right not enough time has gone yet to do the incremental it'll be it'll, it will be at 24 hours but as i mentioned right the archive logs are going to be sent every 30 minutes but if you notice between the full and the and the first archive log Notice that it was only eight minutes, but then to the second one is 30, right? So this time will vary here because it will always, it will always go to the next uh, full hour or the 30 minute mark, right? So this 10.52 to 11 is eight, it could be 20 minutes, right? Depending on, on when it was run. But we'll take uh, this backup report, the first one, right? It, um, and so the yeah that one right there copy so what we're gonna do right it's we're gonna create a, a json format of that backup report and we use this command right we describe the backup report with this id and we are redirecting we're putting it on this temp directory and we're calling it we are calling it db1 l0 backup report that JSON, right? So this is very quick. It will um, create a file and it's done. Now, if we just, um, we're gonna just quickly uh, cat this file so you can see what it is, right? It's, uh, I mean, it's just different parameters on the backup provides the detailed information on, on the database, type of database, locations etc that we're going to use right to to restore it um so this is the nice thing about you know the the whole backup fee functionality and restore functionality it's integrated with oda right if you don't have oda uh that uh, uh we can use one command and use this file to basically recover the database so this is the whole nice integration uh feature of oda absolutely you need to go through an arman training right. yeah that's <laughs> right, right. Yeah. To, to do that yeah. yeah so then now that the backup report is created right we need to copy it somewhere right in this case here we're using scp and this is the location on our source right 10 db1 etc json and we're going to send it to the host and we put it on the same uh on, on, on the tmp directory right it's um it's a very small file so it just takes seconds, right? It's uh, uh, once you authenticate and that's done already, 100%, right? Because it's, it's just text file, very small. Now, right now that that's done, we click on, okay, let's go to the, to the target system, right? It was on the temp file and you can see that in blue highlight, right? The file is there already then we can go ahead and restore it. And if you look at the command, right, this is what we use. I restore database and dash R for the report. We give it the path and we're gonna be restoring to, um, well, that database, right? To... And now here ask you for the password, right? This is gonna be, it's, it's instantiating a new database. So you have an option here to just, select whatever password you want it doesn't have to be the one that was on the primary right it's a it's, it's a new database so you can put in whatever password same one or different one right 
So here we are setting the password. And you're gonna get a job ID within a few seconds, right? And, and uh, describe the job ID. And right, so here, I mean, it's, um, yeah, Paul, if you look at the last file, <laughs> copy PW file, it's the same one. So okay. it's the complete list, right? It's, um, so, okay. um, I mean, it's, uh, we're showing you, we cut down the time. Notice that it started at 11.42 here, right? To do this um, database recovery. It's already completed, but 11.42 to 12.17, right? Oops. Sorry. So to so how many seven, minutes is that? That's about 35 minutes for, 35. for this database. Okay. Right. That it took to recover. Right. It it um some other systems is less than about 20, right? On um that's what we said, right? Probably 30 okay. to 40 minutes, a good average okay. for a small configuration, right? Okay. So and now here we are, right? Still on the target system. If you just list your databases that are present, you can see here that DB1 is configured, right? It's, it's, it's live. And, and um, so there it is. And right, you can describe the database to look at the different characteristics, right? It's, uh, there it is, your database. This one is a single instance enterprise edition, right? It's um, ready for use and we just i mean this is the last step that you wanted to do right let's log in to the oracle database to make sure that we can do that right as a, so log in as a sysadmin and there we are right so i mean um database is alive up and running ready to service um customers clients and at this time, right, we expect the customer go make sure that your primary system, whatever happened, fix it, get it up and running because your 10 day license, uh, 10, 10 days per year license starts to run right now. And it's, uh, uh, it's 10, 24 events, um, right? That's, that's what it is. Yes. So, I mean, this is the last step uh, we can go to questions or Paul, if you have any additional points that you want to make? Um, no, I, again, just uh, this really illustrate how simple it is to take two ODAs and to provide a uh, data protection uh, on the remote side without paying the extra uh, license for uh, enterprise edition. And um, uh, so it's a very cost effective way for some of ODA customers to, to, to do that, protect their data on a remote location uh, and then at the same time, saving uh, 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 license cost, right? So uh, it's great. I mean, just to show you how simple it is with, with ODA, right? All the automation and the integration, uh, you know, so we're leveraging the built-in functionality pro to pro provide additional solutions for our customers, yeah. Exactly, that's a very straightforward process. And I mean, it, it um, you saw the number of tasks just that I restore a single command task, right? It's, uh, and this process is, um, I mean, we're gonna be looking into integrating this in the future, right? So it's much easier to do um, from, from, the, from one Oracle database appliance to the other. Yeah, and it, from uh, protection perspective, I think it's important to keep, keep in mind that that backup report is really important. So. Um, you, you always want to make sure you have that to be able to do the recovery, right? And we're going to be looking at also putting that along with a backup, right? It's, it's um, right. So yes. definitely there are more enhancements coming in on this. So yeah. if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them live or put them in chat. Yes. Yeah, you could just uh, unmute yourself, I believe. And, you know, so we're, we're open for Q&A now. Um, let's see, can this be done? There's a chat question here. Can this be done from ODA M to ODA M? Yes. Yes, definitely. It, it, yeah. um, I was talking to some customers and partners in 
like a Latin America, Latin America, especially in some of in some other ones in Europe, right? It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a low cost way to just protect your data, right? Yeah. So you can take two singles, uh, M to M, um, small to medium, medium to us. Yeah, standard edition two, uh, I believe that's also okay, right? As, yes. Because, yeah. Yeah, definitely, you can do that. Any other question, voice or chat? Okay, seems to be that people are ready for for the weekend. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, well. I mean, you know, Paul and I. It, it uh, yeah. if any other questions come up, it, it. Well, I guess is there a blog or white paper? So the blog is coming. We're going to be documenting this, putting it in a blog, and as I mentioned. I will add other things in there. For example, hey, give me a sample of a script so I can move the, the report automatically when it gets created, right? It, um, but, but that's coming within the next uh, two to three weeks. Okay. Okay. So again, you got our contact information. Uh, feel free, give us a call, let us know. Yeah. Send us an email. Remember that we have a Slack channel for any questions that you want to ask on the Oracle Database Appliance. So, yeah, get there. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone, for attending, and we will see you the next time. Thank you. All right. Bye.